Hello everybody, Mason here, CNA Games. I appreciate you clicking on my video, supporting the channel, supporting the store, which you can do at cnagames.com. Check it out. Brand new website, same people, just a new name, that's all. But I want to go over some cool stuff that TCG Player sent us. And uh, the most exciting and things that they really didn't tell us about. These little, uh, little forms that you uh, can evaluate cards with. So I want to go over those, kind of go over the details of like what exactly these are meant to do and kind of go through the conditioning guide that is on the website. Um, if you go look this up and want to follow along, I'll probably remember to put it in the description, but uh, it's, a, it's a PDF as opposed to a web page. Um, and the web page will give you the PDFs, but this is the conditioning standards that they have uh, for, on the website to uh, help you basically evaluate and have an expectation to uh, what conditions are what on the website. So I'm gonna go over them real quick and, and talk about these. Uh, those are the exciting things, but let's go th show you guys what they all sent. A nice little letter from TCG Player that says, hey, thanks for being a seller on the platform. Uh, some cute little stickers. Uh, a little window sticky put on there. There's a poster that looks very similar like the sticky does with all of our logos and everything. That's awesome. And these little, cute little standees. Um, you can put them out and display them all around on your glass cases or whatever. And then uh, it has a little link there that'll link people to uh, the TCG Player website. But it's just says you're a certified hobby shop and it's kind of a cool little, little thing that they did. So I uh, appreciate them for doing that. But this, this is the thing that uh, I did not know about and uh, it's probably the coolest part is these little templates. And they have them for all the uh, condition guides. And then three extra things. We'll go through extra things, but we'll go through and I, I'm going to follow along on the PDF they have so that we can kind of get an idea of what's going on and uh, evaluate what's going on. So I've got a, a Pokemon card that's just sitting over here. It's white, so hopefully it'll show up really good against this uh, platform. But all these have like a little thing on the top. Um, so this has like a grid. It has a grid on the top of it. Um, so you can follow along. You know what? Stand by. Let me go get a white sheet so I can put over this and show this a little bit better. Hopefully it'll be better. Be right back. Okay, we're back. Sorry, if I had any semblance of forethought, I would have thought to do that before. But now, look, you can actually see everything that's on there. So these are our official decks. They're stamped with tissue player. This is the grid. Um, it, it gives you five millimeter grid across the cards. You kind of line up like that with the little template over the top. You kind of, you're able to see what five millimeters is, uh, which they use a lot for um, sizing of how serious a condition is on a card. So if you have like a crease running through a card, uh, I think they say something and when we get to it, it'll show. It'll say uh, five millimeters is uh, the maximum for uh, whatever condition it is. Like I said, we'll go over it when we get a chance. So. But that's uh, just like a little grid that you can put over the top of the card if you want to measure some things. This is the uh, curling, the curling uh, thing. And it has a little arrow right here on the side. So if you wanted to like measure the curling of a card, you kind of put it beside like this. And if the card curls above where you're able to see the arrow, it'd be too much to be um, sellable on TCG Player, or basically it'd be damaged curled. Um, anything uh, more than five millimeters of curling is damaged. And then they have this centering template, which is very, very, very confusing and kind of hard to uh, follow along with. I don't exactly know how to use this. Um, there's no documentation about how to use it either. It gives you the lines to line it up. And then maybe, and we'll know, because then the card would have to be, I, I don't know how to use this. Um, TG player, give me give me some more guidance on this because I have no idea how I'm supposed to do this. But um, I guess it's handy. I guess it's kind of cool um, to just kind of show if a card is, is centered or not centered or not. Um, but yeah, okay. So <laughs> that's all that. Uh, the first thing on the PDF, and I said if you want to follow along with me, you can open up the the link below. Uh, we're gonna go over uh, centering, or I'm sorry, edgeware. Edgeware is first. Edgeware is first. So they give you this little template. Um, that give you like really helpful little things like um, anything about that amount of edgeware is uh, near mint, and then lightly played is minor, moderate, heavy, or heavy is major. So it kind of gives you a, a an arrow of like how much edgeware collectively that the card could have for any sort of uh, uh, damage to be depending on the condition. And then it says anything above five millimeters is surface wear. 
Um, so basically anything that's inside this arrow line on this are basically, which is very much basically the, the borders of the back of the card. Anything inside of that is surface wear. Anything on the outside of that is, or on that is edge wear. So that's a definition we did not have before. So that's awesome uh, to have this just in the template. And this is awesome just for you guys to, to have too. Just you don't have to have these templates just to know what the, the the thought is behind coming up with these. So it's it's helpful for everybody to be following along and, and kind of get an idea of what's what we're doing. So uh, and you can basically just you know put the card back up and be like, okay, let's see how much edge wear this card has. Even if it's not a template, it's at least a good reference point to say how damaged or, or not damaged a card is and what condition it falls in. A great visual example that helps uh, people see some. So, uh, for scratches, scratches are a score on the surface that removes material. So again, and it gives you a uh, minor, is a near mint value played, and then they give you con the uh, how heavy of a scratch something is. So you have moderate, uh, if it's a moderate, which is all the way the length of that, uh, it has to be moderately played. Uh, major is not shown on here. I'm assuming that's all the way through the card, or maybe uh, if that's even a condition. And then lightly played to near mint is minor, so only minor scratching. So I'm assuming uh, scratches is like on the hollow surface. Maybe if there's like a score in a card, or like a pencil drag or something like that. Um, they call it as a score or a gouge uh, in the terms that they uh, would otherwise use. So. So if you had like a scratch and you wanted to measure it with this, you can kind of measure it anywhere on the card because scratches are, are anywhere. So you can kind of just rotate it around or wherever you want to see and how big of a scratch something might have on it. So that's a neat little thing. Uh, scuffing. Scuffing is a group of scratches or abrasions. So, uh, you know, things like hollow scratches, if you think of like somebody going out on the concrete and scratching a card. Um, so it has slight. If it has that amount of scuffing, that's slight. Um, lightly played is minor, so it kind of gives you a reference for this as well. Um, and scuffing, the, the terms that they use is scratching groups, clouding, binder, or sleeve gloss, or buffing. Um, a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh cards will have the, like this kind of scuffing right out of the, the pack sometimes, on the back. Uh, just the way that the cards are manufactured, and, and I imagine Pokemon has that too. There's just like a, a lack of shininess, or uh, cloudiness as it says, is a pretty good reference. And then... Um, and it says uh, total but not whitening for the moderate range on here. And uh, it says uh, on this front and back uh, to account for. So, you know, if there's like a little minor thing of, of scuffing on it, I mean, it's small enough to fit in that little square there on the card. Uh, it's slight. It's you, you, And it's an near mint card. So, um, TC player has like a, a point system that they use when accumulating points of whether or not something goes into the name to lightly played, to moderately played, it's a point system. And a lot of this stuff is arbitrary and, and, and kind of, uh, you know, subjective, but they're trying their best to make it not subjective and give you at least some sort of visual reference as to what this stuff means. When you say scuffing, how bad is scuffing? Is it all over the card? Is it on the front? Or is it back? Is it all over the, you know, how bad is, is bad enough to be lightly played? So this is giving you an idea um, of what is acceptable by their standards. And I like this. This is all this stuff. I'm not going to have my employees whip these out whenever they look over every single card, but it is nice to have for reference to tell them, okay, this is what we're looking for. All right, surface wear. Surface wear is material loss causing the internal layers to show through the image or color. So we've all seen that. Um, again, it's kind of like scuffing, but you think of like, um, like wear where it's rubbing against the card and it's causing issues. So again, surface wear, um, where you're losing color on a, like an image or um, think of like scratches on like uh, maybe some Watsi hollows or something like that. That's surface wear. And um, uh, the terms that they have is eye appeal, uh, speckling, whitening, uh, wear dots, things like that. Um, so they have surface wear and it's a, a slight, slight is a little bitty tiny thing, which is basically the one of those uh, five millimeter squares, minor, moderate and major compared to a card so you can give have like a reference. Um, we've all seen little nicks and things on the surface of cards or uh, maybe like a little like pin dots or something like that where you think of like a, a pinhole or something like that that you poke through a card. Um, that's what uh, they're thinking about surface wear because it'll show the uh, the back layers of the card. 
So, um, again, slight, minor, moderate, and major. Against, again, I have a, just a card to show you guys. That's surface wear. All right, we're moving on to grime. Grime is, um, let's see what they define grime as. Material or surface from handling, usage, or poor storage. Um, and they basically have like, you know, crud or, or something smeared across of it. It's just dirt or play dirt or, um, you know, black specks or something that's uh, on particularly like older cards from just play. And they kind of give you slight, slight is, is so tiny. Such a tiny little, well, that is smaller than their five millimeter or st or dot. So um, anything with a little bit of grime on it, it's, uh, it's slight, it's lightly played. Um, there is no minor in the, in the chart here, but m moderate, uh, kicks it down to moderately played and then heavy played is major and the entire card is is grimy grimy i guess um so um again reference and then size if you want to look at size comparable to the card i think uh grime is pretty easy as far as uh subjectiveness goes uh something is dirty it's dirty right all right indentations indentation is a notch or groove on the surface or surface that displaces material. So here's a their indentation thing. This is definitely like a like a, a pinhole, and it says right here cannot show through the other side. So um, you think of like a little like a, like a little, little pits or little little indentations on the card. Um, slight, minor, moderate, and major. Um, I don't know what kind of indentation would be a major like that, but that's pretty pretty intense. Uh, indentation there. Uh, they call them ding dents, uh, indent, finger mark, or pock marks. So that's uh, the reference for that. Indentation. Okay. The next one is bend. Bend is uh, another one. It's just like, okay, how bad is a bend? At what point is a bend a crease? Um, or a fold? Is a flip on the end of a card? Is it the same kind of thing? Um, this is a bend. It says align a ridge from folding or pressing. Uh, the terms that it is, falls under is creases or folds. So if we have a, again, a minor, moderate, major. Uh, if it's a crease, a crease starts at MP, it says on here. So to use our token kiss example, gonna give you an idea. It looks like the inside of the, uh, the V right there to the end of that is uh, any Bend that goes past that is still lightly played, moderately played, and heavily played. It's about halfway through the card, if you look at that. So, um, just again for reference, um, this is for bend specifically. Uh, creases uh, start at MP. So anything that is... Um, I, I'll have to double check on this, but I believe a crease is anything that's feelable through a sleeve. Uh, or as a, a firm line that you can feel is... Uh, Starts at MP. Okay, fault. Fault is a, a, a confusing one for me to explain to employees, so I'm kind of glad we get to go over this on here too. Uh, fault is uh, expansion or splitting of the surface or material. It's a split, a tags, flaps, rippling, drips or drops, peeling, delamination or fraying. And the example that they have in the uh, PDF is like the edge where the uh, the die cutters on a card kind of has like the little flip from that. That's what they call a fault. It's like a you know a manufacturing error. Uh, again, an expansion or splitting of the surface or material. I'm going to give you a slight versus a minor fault. Uh, slight is all the way down to moderately played. So something that's really um, you know splitting of the surface or the material is uh, kind of a big deal. So. Think of like around the edges, you know, like a heavy played magic card has that kind of stuff where it might be a slight little bit of fraying or something that's uh, more extreme than just uh, edge wear, uh, stuff like that. And then slight or minor as far as size goes. And I'll show you it's a card. There you go. Just for a reference. Cool. Uh, moving on, we got. Uh, Defects. Defects is the next one that they have an example. Damage is uh, the other classification. They don't have a thing for that. Damage is basically just uh, pen marks, um, an actual hole, a tear, something very, very extreme. And damage stuff is 
normally heavy plate or damaged category, right? So it's pretty, pretty clear and defined, as is just in the name. But defect. Defect is a printing or manufacturing error. Um, something like inking, blurring, crimping, miscuts, centering, errors are shifted are all defects that are from manufacturing or printing errors. And uh, the example that they have is like a, a whitening dot on the edge. Uh, you think of like something like pr a printer hickey or something like that on a card. Um, if you look at this, a slight, minor, moderate, without the card, just for reference. Slight, minor, moderate. Slight can still be near mint. It can still have a defect and still be near mint. Slight, minor, moderate, as far as defects go. And then that's all the uh, the visual representation. So what would be really cool for me to uh, go with through and, and find, kind of like find cards that fit these examples and go through them with my employees. So again, not for them to have these on hand to reference at all times, but just so they have a visual idea of what we're looking for when we talk about defects, our, our faults, our bends, our crimps and things. And again, this is very, very, um, it's, it's trying to take the arbitrariness out of something that is kind of subjective, right? So that's the, the, the struggle that teacher players just kind of have. And they try to have all these people uh, kind of agree on something. And again, uh, the PDF file is very good. It goes through all these things and it breaks down the point conditions and how severe uh, or, or minor something can be. And um, it's, it's kind of a good, a good read if you ever, if you're selling a TCG player, you should definitely look at it. But even if you are just a buyer, they flip through and see what exactly something means. And then if you get a card that is maybe too far in one way or another, or if you're on the fence about something, you kind of use uh, hopefully this video or also uh, the PDF for reference as well. And you kind of get an idea of, of what is what in that regard. But that is uh, just the cool thing about these uh, little, little things from TCU Player. And they, they recently put out a thing saying that they are going to... Um, be making more posts and trying to be more transparent with how their conditioning goes and trying to, as if they make decisions one way or another, they're going to let uh, us as sellers know. And that's something that they must have something in mind or else they wouldn't say that. But uh, it's interesting. It's a good thing. And, uh, you know, as not really employees of TCG Player, but definitely uh, as contractors that we are selling our stuff on their, on their website and kind of, uh, you know, Definitely being at least uh, people that are distributing stuff on their behalf. Uh, it's kind of a, a big deal and important for us to all be on the same page. So awesome little tools. I appreciate uh, TCG Player for sending those out and all, all the stuff that they gave us. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I hopefully you guys got something out of this video. Uh, if you have any questions or want me to go over something or uh, maybe uh, talk about something more specifically, more than happy to put down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. This is Mason, cnagames.com. Check us out, but I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay.